Hey everybody, welcome back to Bob Key TV. Uh, thanks for everybody's subscriptions and views and thumbs up and uh, follow me on Twitter and Facebook if you'd like and buy some t-shirts also. Um, <clears throat> a lot of speculation in the media about whether or not Peter Sagan should have competed in the mountain bike race at the Olympics or the road race. Uh, before the Olympics, uh, Peter Sagan's announcement that he would be doing the mountain bike race was not greeted with as much um, speculation and criticism. Uh, when Greg von Avermaet won the Olympic road race, people thought, well, gosh, if Greg von Avermaet can get over that hill and be competitive, um, then Peter Sagan should have been able to do that also. Von Avermaet and Sagan, very similar athletes. Um, they've been uh, racing against each other a number of times in the last few years in the type of races that suit both of them. Races like Tour Flanders, uh, hillier stages in the Tour de France, and not pure sprint finishes. Uh, Peter Sagan has had a, an unbelievable year, starting with the World Championships last year in 2015 in Richmond, Virginia, where he won, started the season, uh, wearing the rainbow jersey, and has just been an absolute phenomenon on this year. Uh, to do the Olympic road race as, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, to do the Olympic mountain bike race as a professional road racer with a very heavy duty schedule, uh, Peter Sagan might be the only person in the world who could even dream about being competitive in both very different disciplines. But when Van Avermaet won the road race, people thought, well, gosh, it would have been a no-brainer for Peter Sagan to be with Van Avermaet and Jakob Fuglsang in the finish and maybe be a little bit speedier. Uh, and the Tour de France recently, Peter Sagan was absolutely on fire. Three stage wins, green jersey, um, the best Tour de France we've ever seen from Peter Sagan. So I think a lot of people uh, that are road fans uh, were missing Peter Sagan and, and what sort of uh, spectacular fireworks he would have brought to the road race. Um, Van Avermaet might have beaten him anyways. Van Avermaet's beaten him uh, in sprints before, most notably in the Tour de France last year when Peter Sagan probably had his best chance for a stage win last year. Van Avermaet got the better of him. So um, for Peter Sagan to try to transition from a long, not just season, but career as a road, road racer into mountain biking, that he could even have the audacity to do that is pretty impressive. Um, I made a, uh, a, a similar transition from road racing to mountain bike racing. <clears throat> and it was not in the middle of a season either. And it wasn't in the biggest race of the year for the mountain bikers. So, uh, and I found it incredibly challenging. It's a very different physiological requirement for mountain bike racing. It's just below your um, maximum just below your lactate threshold, like microns below and stay there for two, two and a half, three hours in a mountain bike race. And a road race generally has really intense stress on the body for uh, anywhere from, <laughs> from three to 30 minutes and then other periods in a road race where you can recuperate. Mountain biking, it's, you're always on the jazz uh, for the duration of the event. And so physiologically, it's a very difficult transition for the body to make in a short period of time. And like I said, if anybody was capable of it, it's probably Peter Sagan. Uh, whether or not he should have done the road race instead of the mountain bike race, I think it comes down to, number one, his ambition, uh, his enjoyment of the sport, and, but maybe more importantly, number two, replacing number one, you can switch them at, at will, uh, the requirements of his sponsor, uh, Specialized, the bike sponsor, is probably all for whatever Peter Sagan wants to do, and, and Peter Sagan has been an absolutely phenomenal asset to Specialized, and they began their life, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or at least made their bones as a mountain bike producing company, and have made some of the greatest mountain bikes in the history of mankind and continue to make brilliant road and mountain bikes. Uh, so for Peter Sagan, that part of the equation uh, is a no-brainer. Uh, if you're racing on the specialized road or mountain bikes, 
uh, you are uh, not at a disadvantage uh, by any stretch of imagination. So his Tinkoff team would probably have the final say on whether or not they wanted Peter Sagan in the Olympic road race or mountain bike race. And since they are leaving the sport at the end of the year, that gives Peter Sagan pretty much free reign to do whatever he'd like. I think if they said, we're not gonna pay you uh, unless you do the Olympic road race for the rest of the season, it might've been a different story. Um, but Peter must have believed and the team must have believed that he could be competitive in the mountain bike race. And for the opening miles, he proved that that was the case. A couple of mechanicals slowed him down. He lost a lap at the end. Um, but I think, I think it was an audacious and if it had worked out, if he hadn't flatted, uh, people would be heralding him as maybe the most versatile cyclist that ever lived. And uh, to be honest, the, watching the opening miles of the mountain bike race, I thought, oh my goodness, Peter Sagan is going to fly away from the mountain bike field and win a gold medal. But that did not happen. Um, so, you know, a lot of times, Hindsight, it's easy to have 2020 vision when you are uh, looking at something the day after and reflecting on it. But uh, up to that point, up to where he had his mechanicals, I mean, it was looking phenomenal. Um, mountain biking, very different than road racing. And Peter Sagan, maybe the only athlete capable of thinking about uh, doing both. And Peter had a pretty illustrious uh, mountain bike career before he started road racing so um, and you know to be honest uh, it gets boring being a professional road racer can be boring mile after not the races obviously but the training and what you think about and mile after mile of training on the road hour after hour day in day out that you have to do that whether you're bored or tired of it or not you have to put in the miles um, and so maybe a little change of pace for Peter Sagan get off-road a little bit and I would not recommend very few professional road racers try it it's a good way <laughs> and you can ask Cadell Evans uh, who was a great mountain bike racer and Ben King who broke his uh, fibula uh, earlier in the year uh, stepping off his mountain bike and uh, <laughs> for a lot of riders not that Ben King could not become eventually a great mountain bike racer that's not what I'm saying I'm just saying if you're getting paid to ride road race to road race and you're not as good a bike handler as Peter Sagan and which um, maybe nobody no road racer is I mean he's at the Danny McCaskill level of trial skills and at the downhiller level of mountain bike skills. So he definitely has the, the technical ability to dream about transitioning in the middle of a season from road racing to mountain biking. Um, so if, like I said, if he had gotten a medal, it would have been quite, quite remarkable and added to the um, how astounding people find his abilities. I don't believe Nino Schurter was going to be beaten by anybody on the planet in the Olympic mountain bike race. So hats off, gold medal to Nino um, from Switzerland. I think he's gotten a uh, bronze, a silver uh, in the previous two Olympics, Beijing and London, and now a gold medal to add to that. So uh, a complete set for Nino Schurter. And he's been the most dominant mountain bike uh, cross country racer uh, for the last few seasons. So. Um, Sagan would have had his hands full beating Nino. And Nino, very powerful, very quick, very similar to Peter Sagan, and an incredible bike handler. And uh, so <clears throat> I think for me, if, if it's all right with your sponsor and uh, you can make it happen, it did bring a lot of publicity to the Olympic mountain bike race. And uh, Peter Sagan still has a couple of chances to win the gold medal in road racing. So um, I hope to see Peter Sagan in more mountain bike races in the, in the months and years to come. It's, it's great for the sport of mountain biking and he loves doing it. So if, uh, 
if the boogie woogie is in the athlete it's going to bubble up to the surface and it's great if the sport can let it all hang out all right everybody <laughs> thanks a lot uh like i said subscribe thumbs up uh comments follow me on facebook and twitter and grab some t-shirts if you feel like it all right everybody until next time